would you look at that white paint matched looking pretty going on the dyno Ah, uh, the old base model, no sunroof, little tiny steering. God, I love these cars. And I like the seats in the base model too. I just realized I filmed this whole video in vertical format, but uh, I'm gonna make this into a long form, not a short. So I'm gonna do my best to zoom and uh, hope that it doesn't look awful. Oh, and now I'm at a VA, not a VB. Time goes on, man. Got the AP in the corner. What do we see there? Little 438 on the dam. Let's see what tune was on here. Show current map. I bet it's just an OTS stage one. Yeah, stage one, 91. Stage, yeah, stage one, 91. This car is not a stock car. Don't be running stage one, 91 maps on a non-stock car, people, or else your dam will be at 438. Pop the hood. Pretty stock, parent and tick. Uh, got the little sock on it. Yeah, not too bad because the sock is covering all the oil. Um, stock top mount, stuck pretty well stock. It does have a go fast bits diverter valve and a cat back exhaust, and that's about it for this car. So it's close to that stage one, but it's not stage one. It's a Perrin stage one ish thing. And we're going to show you some problems in the Cobb OTS tune when it comes to keeping your dam happy. Update your firmware, people. Get it up to date. Base map, low boost, because that's how we do to make sure there's no problems. Logger time. Data. Tuner tricks. bit of tip and knock we want to take care of we weren't in boost really yet at that point um, we were at let's see here we were only at three pounds when we had that little tip and knock so after that everything was tidy but we want to see why so what we're gonna do this car definitely seems to have some knock characteristics going on um, like I said that stage one map had uh, the dynamic advance had dropped significantly and was staying there so we're going to have to do a little bit of digging and see what this car likes. Everyone always goes for ignition timing when it comes to trying to prevent knock, but what they forget about is that in these modern engines, cam timing is just as important. And so changing your cam timing, this is my exhaust cam, right here, this is right where we're seeing that little bit of knock on tip-in. It was at 1.8 and right in here and it went to 25 it went 20 25 then it goes back down to 20 so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna get rid of this little little spot and see if this car just for whatever reason doesn't love to have a lot of exhaust cam timing we were at 19 there so anyway. we're gonna see what this does and that's tuning this is it guys this is what tuning is you make a change and you see what it does. In a perfect world, you change one variable at a time, but I raised the boost too because we don't have that kind of time. So what we're doing is testing two variables at once. We raised the boost so we got more power out the top. We're still very low power, or sorry, we're still very low boost. But by changing the AVCS, I'm seeing that I did lose a little spool up. So what I want to do is get the spool up back without inducing knock. And that's what we're going to try to do. So. We have one set of tasks with variables and another set of tasks with variables. And while it may be changing two at once, they're in different places, so it'll be okay. Okay, two variables, run number three. Let's go. Run, run, run. 
All right, we got our spool back. No knock, starting to make some power out the top. Should hopefully be able to get this up to around 320, would be my guess, and torque will be whatever we decide. So, we're still occasionally getting this little bit of knock on tippet. Let's look at a few other things we could do to try to iron this out, again, without just dumping the ignition timing in the toilet so the car doesn't drive good. Let's look real quick at the airflow frequency 6.532. That puts us at about 71 grams per second of airflow. Just to confirm, we're going to come here to TGV map ratio and make sure that the TGV isn't opening right where that knock happens. It isn't, but it is very close. We can come in here to our injection timing table and see that there is an actual sudden, pretty abrupt jump in injection timing right where we go from 156 to 186, which is where we're seeing that knock. Let's try taking just a little bit of injection timing out, just for that area, and let's see what that does. Alright, after a number of changes, we have had multiple pulls where we are now able to maintain like a zero ignition timing target, still have the same timing coming in. Right here where we were knocking before, we were at 8 degrees, we're at 8 degrees right now. So we didn't change the timing through there, we're not knocking, and we've done multiple pulls in a row but turned her up a lot and now we're getting a little bit of knock up top so we're going to go ahead and clean this up and that's tuning you just got to clean 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 change make changes do more changes until the car is ready to go final numbers right where i was expecting 323 horse 359 torque look how flat and long that torque is it just goes forever we love it love it so wait, I was showing you that I was in a VA earlier, or later, than this. Let's see how it stacked up to the VB. Oh, sad. These cars are strikingly similar in modifications. They both have a parent intake, they both have a cat-back exhaust, they both have a go-fast bits diverter valve. But, as you can see, the VB is just a far superior mobile. Look at that. So much more power with basically the same modification. All tuned up, let's take it for a drive and I'll see you guys in the comments.